Yamaha describes the Tracer 9 as being part of their upper mid-sized versatile segment of the market. It's a motorcycle basically for the gentleman or the lady that has gotten tired of the brutal aggressiveness of a four-cylinder motorcycle but is not ready to drop down to a more docile two-cylinder so uh, a sporty triple is exactly what they need. I've had the Tracer 9 now for uh, about half a week. I've put a lot of kilometers in that saddle so uh, here's what I think of it. But before any of that, this episode is sponsored by Exter Wallet, the smart wallet, time-saving designs for smarter living. Stick around until the end of the episode to find out more. The engine is the true hero of this bike. It's, it's got a very linear power delivery. It is very well behaved. There are no surprises. And it's definitely got more than enough power for the average Joe to enjoy themselves on it. Uh, bigger bikes, 160, 180 horsepower. Those are wasted on uh, people like me or uh, I think most of us out there that don't really ride fast, don't go on, uh, on track days. We don't really know what to do with all that power. Is just wonderful but with this triple you can pretty much redline it all day long you're gonna have a wonderful time doing it and you're gonna feel like you've gotten a hell of a lot out of the bike so i'm very impressed with that engine no complaints there whatsoever riding position as well extremely comfortable i wasn't expecting this the tracer 9 looks a lot bigger in its press photos than it does in real life when i saw it the first time i thought is this the same bike that I saw in the photos because it looks a lot smaller than I imagined and I thought I wasn't going to be comfortable on it but again at 1.8 meters tall I was surprisingly very comfortable on it including for long stretches of road like two three hours without uh, without getting off it my back was straight my feet were very relaxed my arms were also very loose they weren't cramped up i wasn't getting pushed into the handlebars riding position is great and i was very well surprised by that i wasn't i wasn't expecting it the seat however you could do better on that yamaha there's i know there's a comfort seat as well i haven't i haven't ridden on that but it's tapered towards the front and it's also lifted from uh, from the rear which means that your butt is pretty much sitting like this so that's not really comfortable for 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 long distances of travel but in the ergonomics department that is pretty much my only complaint brakes uh again one of the worst brakes that i've ever felt on a motorcycle before it's got two discs they are big enough the problem with them is that they're very very spongy they have no initial bite and they have no after bite to them so uh I don't have a lot of trust in these. So if you do decide to buy it, the first upgrade I would do would be some hard braided brake lines. The GT comes with semi-active suspension. What that means is that for damping only, not for preload, the preload is adjustable uh, manually on the front and on the rear. But for, uh, for damping, the bike will pretty much not scan the road in front of you but it will realize that it's going over a bump and then it will adjust the suspension accordingly so you don't feel it the bigger bumps obviously those will get through you'll feel them but a lot less than you would without it and the smaller bumps the unevenness in in paved roads which we have a lot here those you're not really going to feel at all so it's worthwhile upgrading to to semi-active suspension you're going to be a lot more comfortable on the bike now the dash is a big topic of uh, of discussion with this bike it's a it's a seven inch dash but it's split into two three and a half inch uh, screens i like the idea of it i like that yamaha actually took a chance and designed something so out of the box that it gets people talking if companies didn't do that then everything would end up looking like a tablet and that's it one eye another eye eyebrows and a nose the yamaha had a sense of humor here i love it if companies didn't innovate or uh, or take chances with their designs all of the bikes would look the same all cars would look the same so i'm i'm glad that they took a chance on the screen but i'm not very happy with the execution 
of their taking a chance. And there are two reasons for that. The screen is, is not tiltable. It would be nice if it was tiltable, but it's at the wrong angle. It's pointing towards my chest. So every time I want to know how fast I'm going, I actually have to take my eyes off the road and look down. On other bikes, you just glance down and you can sort of still see what's going on in front. But here, no, you have to actually tilt your head down so you're not looking at the road anymore. And secondly, they've got a lot of real estate in uh, those seven inches, but all of the text is tiny. The speed is, is big, it's huge. The gear indicator is also big, but all your riding modes, all of that, that stuff that you might want to look at once in a while, it's got very, very tiny text. And uh, that's bad for a motorcycle, let's be serious. I would have much preferred for them to take all of the riding stuff info and put it onto the right screen where it can be bigger so you can, uh, you can see what's going on, how the bike is actually set up. The right side of the screen can also be customized with different information that you want to put on there. Everything from a trip computer to uh, your fuel gauge to air temperature and all of that info is pretty much nice and big. So that's where I would have put the riding mode info as well. Yamaha, this whole uh, having one headlight on all of the time, your low beam and having the high beam on the other side being off, that's a big no-no from now on. We're not going to do that anymore because I'm tired of old men called Joe coming up to me and going, hey buddy, one of your lights is out, yeah? And it's never a nice lady that comes up to me and tells me that my light's out. No, it's always old man Joe somehow, you know, follows me around. So uh, we're not going to do that from now on, yeah? Okay. The windshield does its job pretty well to, to keep you protected from the elements. It is adjustable with one hand. That is a very great execution there. So uh, well done. No complaints about the windshield. The instrument cluster is also a little bit hit and miss for me. Now, while some of the buttons feel fine, feel great, they have a nice finish on them. The scroll wheel, for example, if you turn it up and down, it's, it's a great tactile feeling. But once you have to push it, it's just, it feels cheap. I'm not, I don't like that. Yamaha has also gone and made some very weird decisions with the placement of their buttons here. Where most other motorcycles have the flash button, the high beam button, Yamaha has decided to change that button into a riding mode selector. So now uh, muscle memory will dictate that you're going to be changing your riding modes quite a bit. The clutch has a very nice feeling to it. I haven't missed the gear yet. It is quite light, even though it has flappy clutch syndrome. The gearbox is very smooth. The quick shifter, again, amazing. I cannot imagine riding this bike without that quick shifter. It just makes everything a lot smoother. It makes you feel like a, like a MotoGP star. So uh, it's a good investment for your mental health. The lighting solution on the new Tracer 9 leaves a lot to be desired. It will get you home, but slowly. The low beam is nowhere near powerful enough to make you feel confident riding at night and the cornering lights, while on paper they are there, they are extremely dim and light up too far of an angle. I'm not interested to see what I've already passed, so uh, not very useful. All right, as usual, you guys have sent in some questions about it. Let's get straight into that. Is there any numbness on the hands after a long ride on the bike? Uh, I think the most I've spent on it was about three hours with no brakes, no, uh, no getting off it, and I'm fine. I usually complain about the stuff, but no. My hands are fine, my feet were fine, my back was fine. No numbness, no hurting of any sort. Previous model owners complained about dragging the center stand in tight corners, especially with the pillion. Is that still a thing? Uh, hasn't happened to me. I haven't ridden it that aggressively that, uh, that it became a problem or an issue, but no. Normal riding style uh, center stand will not drag on the floor. Does it vibrate? Interestingly enough, no. Uh, pretty much at any rev range, city riding, highway riding, back roads, twisties, you're not gonna have a problem with vibrations either in your hand or, uh, or in your feet. So you're fine there.
Has it enough power for two up riding and what's the fuel range? Definitely, you got almost 120 horsepower there. This is not a bike I would complain about lack of power. Fuel range, anything in between 200 and 300 kilometers depending on how you ride it. Acceleration test versus the GS. How did you know? 1200 GS, 125 horsepower. Tracer 9, 118 horsepower, 0 to 100. 3, 2, 1, go! I consider myself the winner. See, there's no point in having extra horsepower if you don't know what to do with it. How much does it dive under hard braking? Not a lot and that's partly due to the fact that the brakes are squishy so they don't have that bite uh, and secondly the semi-active suspension really does its job so uh, diving is not really an issue on the Tracer 9. How does it handle bumpy roads? Again that suspension really does its job well. Uh, you've got two different settings i put it on the more comfortable one because of the roads that we have here and um, it's comfortable it, 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 it absorbs those bumps very very well uh, the big ones you're obviously going to feel them but if a road is uneven those are just floats by so uh, we're good there does the heel of your boots touch the center stand or pillion foot pegs when riding with your toes on the pegs yes you know your tracer very well. Your left leg on the foot peg, the heel of it will always be touching the side stand. So I just end up playing with it while I'm riding. But yes, it, uh, it does touch it. The bike is a sports tourer. However, how would it handle the occasional dirt or gravel road? A road like this, it's fine. An unpaved road, a gravel road, as long as you're going slow, it's fine. It's obviously got no protection, so you're taking a risk there. If you set the throttle response to number four, I think that's the, the least responsive, then uh, you're going to be fine on off-road as well. It's not a problem. I'm six foot, 1.84 meters. Would that work out well for my height? I'm 1.8, and um, I'm, I'm comfortable on it. The seat height has two positions. The foot pegs have two positions as well. You can move them up or down and you can also adjust the handlebar. So you're more than likely to find the, the perfect position for you here, even if you're a tall guy. Okay, and then you guys also wanted me to compare it a lot with the Triumph Tigers and BMW's XR, the 900 and the S1000 XR. I haven't ridden the Tigers yet, uh, those are on my to-do list. But as far as the 900 XR is concerned, I think that's a much smaller bike. It feels a lot less powerful than this one. You can have a lot of fun with it, but this one just feels like a more solid long distance tourer. Uh, with the S1000 XR, that's in a completely different category from this. It's a four cylinder bike, it's a lot more powerful, but as far as ergonomics are concerned, they're pretty much the same on it. So uh, for long distance, you'll feel as comfortable on this as you will on the big XR. Yeah, so uh, in the end, who is this bike for? I, I like it. I really like what Yamaha has done with it. I think it's for the guy or lady that wants to do both commuting and long distance touring in the weekends or uh, take a week off and go tour somewhere in the world. It's okay for a pillion as well. They're going to be comfortable. These handrails really will do their job for, for the pillion to hold on to. I would highly suggest getting a top box if you're doing uh, proper touring with uh, with somebody else. But in conclusion, it's a it's a touring bike and a commuting bike for, uh, for the rider that wants to have a little bit of fun. Doesn't want a full-on sports bike, doesn't want to live with all of that aggressiveness but still wants to hear that sporty engine and uh, feel all of that power so that's my take on it all right 
commenty comments time. If there's anything that I've missed out about the Tracer 9 and you want to know about it, drop down to the comment section below and uh, I'll answer your questions there. Extra wallets offer you quick card access, every card you need right at your fingertips thanks to their quick and secure card mechanism, RFID protection so your identity is safer than ever before, they are made out of premium durable leather and the piece de resistance worldwide tracking. Never lose your wallet again, never spend 20 minutes when you're almost out of the front door trying to find a wallet that wants to play hide and seek. The tracker is solar powered, 2 hours of sunlight gives you up to 3 months of charge, is trackable worldwide and you can also call it using your phone. Check out the affiliate link in the description below for more info. If you've enjoyed the show, give it a big thumbs up. If you think you've learned something new, consider subscribing or becoming one of our Patreons to help us make more of these shows. Cheers, and I'll see you on the next one.